Okay, welcome back. Today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at four broken N64s. Now, the sellers stated that these were for parts not working. And, of course, there are no jumper packs or expansion packs. And along with these four N64s, he also sent me this power brick. And it seems it has a sketchy cord. So I'm going to be taking a look at that in the end of this video as well. So first I'm going to be taking a look at one here with a stuck reset. The button doesn't rebound. But even so, the, the system seems to be working. There's nothing wrong with this. It has sound, pictures good. Um, so I'm just going to be trying to bring up that reset switch. So after removing the top shell, this unit is relatively clean on the inside, I don't have to do much with it. So I'm just going to remove the two buttons here and just add some alcohol and try to scrub it down any gunk or any dust that's left. I'll get that off. So now I'm going to focus on the power and the reset button. Now these buttons were giving me issues. Not so much the power button, but the uh, reset button was. So I'm just going to clean the edges of it so it can slide up and down easier. So now with everything assembled here, the button seems to be working. So here's everything fully assembled and everything is working properly. Now here I just need to connect my controller but the reset is working. So let's take a look at unit 2. I'll insert the jumper pack and see if I can get an image. This console also has a stuck reset button and after fidgeting for a while here it seems to be working so it just needs to be cleaned and this one should be good as new. So with the top shell removed I noticed there is some rust on this unit and there's a lot of dust so I'm just going to clean the exterior off camera and then I'll take a look at the PCB board a little closer on camera. As always I'll remove this car connector it just comes right off it's not screwed or anything and I'll clean just this section here this like tends to gather a lot of dirt and grime so even if it, your unit does look clean it's always good if you're in here clean under this um, card connector. So here's the unit all cleaned up. Now the reset switch is still scratched up. I can't really do much about that. But this unit is more reliable now. So all this unit needed was a cleaning.
So let's look at unit number three. Now for unit three, they added a packing tape over the expansion card slot. So I'll remove that and there is a little bit of residue that's left over. So I'll take care of that, no big deal. So of course to test it, I have to add a jumper pack and see if I can get an image. So after trying it several times, I couldn't get anything. I wasn't as lucky as the first two units. So let's open it up. Now this unit is more clean than the other two. So I hope that I can get this one to work because this one's almost flawless on the inside. Even under the cartridge connector, everything is clean under there. So I can't really imagine what killed this unit. So after cleaning up the cartridge connector and having a closer look, I think I found the problem. So I've looked through the light here and on the right side I don't see any light passing through. So I suspect there's an obstruction of some sort on the right side of this pin connector. So I'll take some pointy tweezers here and see if I can pick out the obstruction without actually damaging the pins. So be careful if you do clean something like this or if you try to remove an obstruction be careful of the pins you don't want to bend them. I suppose I could have also used the pick it might have been more reliable than these tweezers but I am getting little bits of pieces of whatever was in here. Now it looks if I had to take a guess I suspect somebody tried to clean this with a card and a paper towel and wedged a little piece of the paper towel in the corner here causing the cartridge not to fully um, engage with the pins. So now with that piece of lint removed, I'm going to try to see if I can get this console to work. So as you would expect, this unit does fire up. It works perfectly. Now just be sure to always check your car connectors when you don't get any signal because that could be one of the culprits as you saw just now. And this goes for almost every cartridge based console. So many times people like to clean their consoles with paper towels and cards and are other things that aren't ideal for cleaning and they actually make things worse or they just don't fix anything and then they tend to think that the console isn't working they start going down the rabbit hole and figuring out trying to figure out what's wrong with it and it's just a simple piece of lint or a piece of paper towel wedged in between that you can't see So on to unit number four. Now this one is labeled broken, so let's see if it really is broken. So like the first one, after messing with it for a while, I couldn't get any image, so let's remove the top shell and see if I can fix this one. So now my multimeter has like some thermometer setting and I noticed that this chip here is getting about 60 degrees Celsius on my thermometer and I, it's getting hot to the touch where I can't keep my finger there. And I spray a little bit of alcohol just so you can get a visual idea of what's going on. The chip on the left is heating up and, and getting rid of the alcohol, dissipating the alcohol a lot slower than the chip in the middle here. So maybe this is a bad CPU or I'm not sure if this is CPU chip or what the official name of this chip is but perhaps this chip is bad so I'll remove it 
and replace it with another co parts console. So after I remove the chip with a hot air station, I'm going to go over these pins here and clean them up with a little piece of desoldering braid and just to flatten down the um, pins a bit so the chip can lay flat. So now I know that these chips do tend to get hot, but not as hot as this one is getting. So I know that there's something wrong with this console but I'm just taking a shot in the dark by replacing this chip and hopefully it works. So with the chip in place, I align the chip off camera. I'm just gonna pin the chip in four corners here so then I can go over with the flux pen and solder the chip in place. So for work like this, I tend to use a lot of flux. Flux usually gets rid of the bridges and it allows for the joints to be perfectly wetted. So as you can see, all the joints that I'm making are perfectly um, shiny. So they're nicely wetted joints. There are some bridges, I'm getting rid of them slowly, but you can't get rid of them without using proper flux because without flux, you can't do this work. Of course, I always go over the work and clean up the excess flux, the residue that's left over from the flux, and then I can expect the board to make sure that there are no bridges left. So after swapping that big chip there, I'm still it's still getting really hot, so I'm suspecting that it could be a RAM issue or something further along down the line. So I'm going to replace these two RAMs and hopefully it'll fix the problem. Now here's a just a fast forward me replacing one of the RAM chips here now I did replace the one on the right side of the screen so this is just the second one and hopefully I can get this thing to work if not then this whole unit goes to the parts bin
So after swapping the large chip and the two RAM chips, I still didn't get an image, so I'm just going to use this board for parts. Now I did have an extra board on hand that was from a parts console, the exterior shell was beat up, so I just scrapped that and I kept the, uh, internal, the internal board, and I just plopped it into this one, and it's good as new. It's not technically a fix, but it is a working console now. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. Sometimes you can't fix them all, at least I can't fix them all. So now let's take a look at the power supply. So after I unraveled the electrical tape that was around here, it seems they just twisted the wires together and then taped around them just to make sure that they weren't touching each other but that's still an electrical hazard so I'm just gonna replace this whole wire so to remove this wire I'm gonna heat up these two joints here and just slip out the wire and then I'll just clear up the pads so I can open up the through hole. Now my iron was a little bit cold. I should have raised the temperature just a bit. Um, so it was giving me a little bit of issues. But as you can see, I just take a little piece of ribbon and just clear up the through hole so I can insert the new plug through these holes. So here's the old plug, the one that was in the brick. I need this strain relief, so I'm just, just going to use a hot air station just to warm up the strain relief. Now be careful because you can melt it. As you can see, it is getting shiny. That means it's getting melted. But once it's warm enough, it should slip out. This was starting to frustrate me because this was not coming out as easy as I thought it would. So I cut the end off just to have a better grip on it. And then it eventually did slip out. So here's the new plug I'm going to be using. Now this came from a device that had a proprietary plug. So I don't need that end. I'm just going to clip it off. And then I'm going to insert the strain relief and tin the ends. So these wires are always great to have on hand. They're pretty universal and you can repair a lot of things with them. Or a frayed power brick or of any sort actually. It doesn't have to be an N64 brick. It could be any power brick. Um, I always keep these wires handy even if I'm throwing away a device that I don't need I cut the wire off that the um, power plug off so I can save these wires for future projects so after I strip these wires I like to tin them just to keep them straight so when I push them through the through hole they don't fray or bunch up it's just easier for me to do it like this. Now one little thing to note here on the silk screen you'll see in these two through holes one is labeled N and the other one is labeled L. The N is neutral and the L is live. Now you want to keep this in mind because sometimes polarity does matter in most cases it doesn't but just to be safe I like to make sure to keep the polarity right to, to know which polarity is which the pl power plug that you're replacing should have a stripe a white stripe that goes across the the cable and that indicates neutral so when I turn the board over here you'll notice here the lead with the white stripe is in the end through hole so it's correct polarity so now after that we reassemble everything and test it.
So I have the brick plugged up and I'm just going to plug it in the back of the console. Turn it on. Hey, it works. So this console we already knew was working and this brick is working as well. So if you like this video, please share this with your friends, like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.